All right, hello everyone. Welcome back to our last day of hope. How's the conference going? Everyone tired now or ready for more? Thank you for volunteering. Oh, you're welcome. All right, so we have another great talk here called Castaway, a do-it-yourself platform for video capture, automation, and various antics from our presenter, Adam Tanier. So with that, I will pass it to you, Adam. Every, every project needs a uh, clever title, so I've called this one Castaway, uh, partly because nobody has a VCR anymore, uh, and I, I also have this strange hobby of collecting VHS tapes. But um, <coughs> All right, so uh, I'm Adam Tanier, uh, mostly programming in Java and Python, um, although kind of a little bit of everything. Uh, the last time I gave a talk at Hope uh, was a, about the Lisp programming language. And another one of the problems was the longer you research, the better sources you find, and the scope of your project just keeps increasing. So um, personally, I'm involved uh, with some robotics and computer vision, uh, which is interesting, but again, there's a lot to go through. Um, and I'm also a member of uh, FUBAR Labs in now North Brunswick, New Jersey. So find and support your local hackerspaces. Uh, as, as we heard from the last talk, time is a finite uh, resource. It is the necessary but not sufficient ingredient in basically everything. So I feel like I should have maybe started this, this earlier when, when I knew that there were a lot more VHS tapes out there, or maybe should have never started at all. But uh, the funny thing is that there's a lot of weird things getting captured by VHS. Like I found someone who decided to record the, uh, the special edition of Star Wars, uh, which was on, uh, I think, the WB-11. And unfortunately, that happened to be the same day that the, uh, the Columbia disaster occurred. So <laughs> in, enjoy your uh, escapism. Yeah. <laughs> but um, the other part of it was, uh, you know, if, if you are looking for something interesting to use as a, uh, as a data source, there's not too much, you know, more, more copious than, uh, than live TV. Um, so there's, there's a few advantages to that, too. Uh, but you, know, you can't go faster than real time. Um, but uh, so if, uh, if there's anything that you want to watch, it's probably out there. If you, want, uh, you know, if you want to watch Alex Trebek host Classic Concentration, there is a channel for that. If you would like to absolutely obliterate five hours of your day, six days a week, there is a channel that has Star Trek from about 8 p.m. onward. Um, if uh, you want to discover a show that has two former Star Trek actors, uh, I think uh, Benson had uh, Rene Aubergenois, which I've been making sure I'd pronounce properly for most of the last week, um, and Robert Picardo. Um, so there's, there's all sorts of weird guest shows, you know, guest appearances and things like that. Um, lots of late night stand up that did not age very well, but uh, um, I, I found a tape that someone had labeled Trip to London. It was not their trip to London, it was Good Morning America when they couldn't watch it. So that was a little disappointing, but um, so this is, this is sort of an interesting uh, revelation that I had, although I could have just probably gone to film school or acting school or something. Uh, but humans like narrative. They like things to have a start, a middle, and end, a resolution. Things are supposed to make sense. This is why 
I mean, Unsolved Mysteries was a cool show, but kind of madness-inducing. Um, you know, we, we tell ourselves stories about, you know, who we are, who other people are, you know, the, the rise and fall of civilizations. Um, of course, the, uh, the downside to having a new theory is you try and jam everything else into it. But um, it's, uh, it's not a bad thing, usually. We have, um, you know, stories we tell ourselves sometimes that are not true, but uh, it helps for us to make predictions and sense of things. Uh, I could argue that uh, lots of improved display technologies are also in service of having a narrative, higher fidelity, more believability. Uh, you know, this is where I wonder why I didn't bring water with me. It's because I finished it all already. Um, but um, anyway, uh, this is why we like good special effects because it will convince us of something that is true. Uh -huh. ASCII and you shall receive ski. We will receive a silly ANSI. I think that's the other reason why people don't like spoilers. They want to be transported away. They don't want things ruined. Uh, although I feel like, you know, if you go on vacation, you kind of want to know what's there already. But uh, humans don't like to be bored. They, they, you know, will invent stuff not to have to think about things. Um, but, so. Uh, you know, the question is, well, if there's all this television to watch, can we perhaps get the computer to watch it for us? So the, the original idea was, um, uh, you know, the TV shows themselves were not that interesting, but the random commercials that people found, uh, and, you know, I have tapes that I made as a kid that I, you know, dutifully got rid of the commercials, which is kind of the most important part now, is you can get a show anywhere, uh, but you may not have the serendipity of uh, finding the right commercials. So uh, it's also sort of interesting to think about the, the expansion of television and radio. Um, you know, the, the, the show Prairie Home Companion, which we do not talk about anymore. Uh, you know, just, just imagine you are alone on the plains and this is your companion. Enjoy not being lonely for a little while. Uh, but. Um, you know, especially something like Star Trek. They, they put in the, the idea for the sets and all the music and, you know, if you want to fall asleep, maybe you'll run a uh, several hour loop of engine sounds. You know, you get to not be where you are. Um, so here's, here's a few benefits of, you know, television versus reality. Uh, also on TV, no pandemic for the moment. But um, the other good things about using it as a data source is, you know, there's, there's been thought put into basically every aspect of it. Uh, you hope that they wrote the story as well, but um, things are predictable. You know, the, the procedural proceeds. The uh, mystery is solved within your, your 30 or 50 minute time frame. Uh, and there's space for commercials in the middle. One of the things that uh, I thought about, well, it would be funny, you know, to have uh, kids' books with advertisements in them, but then I realized that there's YouTube, so. There's also, um, you know, before you go to sleep, what do you say? You know, oh, you know, mommy, tell me a story, daddy, tell me a story. Uh, or, you know, when you come home, what do they ask? What did you learn in school today? Nothing. You, you want to have some sort of narrative to uh, fill in the gaps of what's going on. You know, word from distant lands, even if distant lands is this school. So, um, the, the downside, of course, of using television, and who knows if space aliens are judging us by our our emitted transmissions, um, but it's not the real world. Uh, 
It's very clean, it's very pretty, it's very colorful. Um, it is literally fiction in most cases, so any sort of um, cultural insights you might draw from local or foreign television, you know, they, they produce their works as well. So everyone is sort of learning television as a, as a communication medium. Um, uh, so I, I wanted to have a few more legal cases, but the, the big one here is uh, known as the Betamax case. Funny enough, Betamax, the format didn't survive outside of uh, professional recording studios. Uh, but um, this was a case brought by Universal Studios, Supreme Court, decided in favor of Sony. Uh, making full copies of television is deemed fair use for the purposes of time shifting. Well, I don't know what other purposes you would have for recording television, uh, either in full or in part, but um, this fair use sort of carve out uh, or codification um, enabled lots of further technologies. Um, there was also something about the, the Berne Convention, which I thought was something from the 80s. It is from the 80s, but it's the 1880s, uh, and that concerns things like um, making excerpts, derivative works, things like that, uh, but not a lawyer. So, um, so uh, minor physical demo time. Uh, nothing's getting plugged in, though. All right, you know what, that's good enough. Everyone knows what a Raspberry Pi looks like. Uh, I guess for the benefits of the viewers at home. Um, it's just this kind of crappy flat panel antenna, but we're in New York City, give or take, so it works. Um, this is a uh, DVR that you can purchase. Um, this is sort of an outgrowth of the uh, cable set-top boxes, not cable, but uh, broadcast for the digital television transition. Um, well, I have more on this later, but... Right, so uh, the way that this is sort of structured, um, and I thought it would be a bigger problem because I thought it would have more code written, but uh, not that much code got finished. Um, and so sorting out the licenses won't be that big of a problem. But um, this is mostly just for monitoring and as a uh, sort of, I guess, side process of, uh, of actually recording. Uh, and once you have the files, you can use a lot of the same OpenCV uh, pipelines to do analysis, and it doesn't have to be real time, and you can put it on more powerful hardware. Uh, um, of course, without the processing, you can do live streaming, um, and it's not a big problem. But, so, uh, this is sort of the, the star of the show. It's a little bit disorienting to be able to see myself, but um, this is just a USB 2 HDMI capture uh, device, and you know, I thought, how is this possible? Uh, it, is, it is not a scam, but you have to, one, make sure you're plugging in the right thing. It's got USB on one side and HDMI on the other. I have plugged things into itself, not helpful. Uh, but um, I have the options in the next, next slide. Um, and the important thing about the, uh, using the, converter box is I needed something with a tuner and an HDMI output. 
So my TV will not output HDMI. It's not that fancy. Um, I don't have a receiver or anything like that. So uh, this is about 15 bucks. Uh, there are analog versions for analog sources, um, usually called an easy cap, also about 15 bucks. Uh, I'm not that old, I hope but I remember where you could easily pay 300 for something like that just to get video into your computer. Uh, so here's the important settings for VLC. Uh, you, you choose your, your source, you have your uh, resolution, set your caching to zero, and then the very important thing is choosing MJPEG. The motion JPEG encoding will give you you know, 30 frames per second. Uh, and this is important because one of the other applications for this is as the sort of world's smallest KVM. So uh, you get this, you plug it into your computer, you plug into your other device with HDMI out. You get yourself a media keyboard, imagine it here, uh, and then you try not to forget which keyboard you're typing on. But once you get the network set up, uh, you can forget about it. You can SSH, you can do everything else, um, and it's a lot smaller than carrying another monitor around. But uh, this, this has saved me a few times, uh, although <laughs> I spent a good six hours working on this yesterday, and discovered that the, the local Hope Network would not allow me to connect from device to device, probably for the best. Uh, one hotspot would also not let me do that. My second hotspot, why should I have two hotspots? But that worked, so I was, I was <laughs> connecting over the network, you know, to this local device because nothing else worked. But. So uh, one of the things that uh, was useful to me before I actually was able to find a Raspberry Pi 4, um, the most important thing about these two boards is that they're in stock. You can buy them and have them you know, soon. Uh, definitely buy a heat sink, though. Um, this one on the right, uh, which right, this right, has a uh, Raspberry Pi cable, uh, camera connector in case that is useful to you in projects. Uh, the one on the left, I think, is substantially faster. Um, but I'm also not sure what is taking up the most uh, processing time. Uh, it is, yeah, definitely get a heat sink. Get a case with a fan if possible as well, uh, as this will, this will max out available CPU. Um, but uh, the cool thing with this is they have infrared receivers, so when you are when you are learning the device codes, uh, it's just right there. Um, there was a, uh, I think I had to have it on another slide. Yep, okay, so they have the uh, infrared detector built in. Um, this took me a little bit too long to figure out, uh, but they moved it from the previous LIRC uh, into the kernel itself. So uh, you have to set something in the config um, you choose what pins you have, either on the PCB or as an output uh, as well. Um, and you have very easy uh, access to infrared. Uh, and from there, you can use it as a remote control to uh, interface with your other devices. Uh, so uh, <laughs> this is where we have a little bit more story. Um, so for a very long time, uh, I had been telling people to plug their cable into their television. And even if they didn't have a cable TV subscription, my understanding was that the cable companies were supposed to provide over-the-air channels for free, as maybe this uh, high, high moral notion of public safety that the, the 
broadcast airwaves that belong to the people should be carried at, you know, just as a courtesy. Uh, but uh, they, they decided in this area and probably everywhere else to encrypt them. So uh, you get to rent a cable box for another $5 a month or whatever for your broadcast basic plan. Hooray. Uh, maybe, maybe we should be taxing some of those rights of way that the cable companies are enjoying. But anyway, so this was a little bit annoying. Uh, one of the things my television would tune all of the cable channels in about eight minutes uh, and then would take another 40 minutes to get rid of all these scrambled ones, which was not ideal, but you didn't have to do it very much, uh, very often. So once everything went away except for Home Shopping Network and all the placeholder channels, uh, I decided, why not? Let's, uh, let's go old school and get an antenna. And I learned a little bit too much about antennas, but... Uh, where I live is somewhere between New York and Philly, and I was thinking, well, if I have, you know, a 60, 80 mile range antenna, which, you know, theoretically works, but uh, curvature of the earth and all that uh, doesn't. So I decided, why not? I'll get this antenna. If I can point it at Philadelphia, which is more distant, maybe I can get, you know, the, the stronger New York signals out of the, the, the back reception lobe of the antenna. The antenna itself is, I believe, a combination uh, Yagi Uda and log periodic, and whatever the interaction of those things didn't make it that possible. But uh, I also learned that ABC6 has decided that they want to stay on their original frequency. Uh, the call letters are WPVI, uh, don't get that in the wrong order. Uh, and VI meaning Roman numeral six. So they are, in fact, on the old uh, low frequency. Uh, I think it's a high VHF, or it might be a low VHF. Uh, and so you need a very large antenna, um, which is probably why it's better to have it carried on uh, cables. But um, anyway, so I, I have this new crazy idea to make a, uh, an antenna, but where am I going to put it? going to put it in the attic because I don't want to go outside ever, uh, especially if there's risk of contact with the ground at high velocity. So uh, bought some MDF. Uh, this is at um, my hackerspace, a former location though, and that's another different long weird story, but uh, got a homer bucket, uh, got some MDF, did some measurements, um, some time on the bandsaw. Uh, drilled the holes. I feel like a genius for putting the, the second hole to lift it because otherwise this would have been much more difficult. And uh, some bags of sand. So this entire thing is portable. Uh, other people have been doing similar things, uh, but usually they use concrete, which is would be not great if you're renting. But uh, here's the antenna. Here's a wonderful pandemic haircut that I acquired over time. Uh, and here is the antenna in the attic, where no one has to think about it. Uh, but, um, yeah, so that's sort of the, the physical hardware part. Um, so, uh, let's see. Some of the, the sort of theoretical underpinnings of this project, which I guess you need some, you need some theory in order to know which direction you should go. But... Uh, there was, in, in my early days of the internet, I came across a sort of media experiment called the, the Zen TV experiment. And you were supposed to watch uh, 15 or so minutes of any TV program with the sound off. So you do not have the, the added uh, sort of stimulation, but also sort of convincing you of the reality of the of the show, and you're supposed to keep track of every technical event. So if somebody zooms, if they cut to the next scene, uh, if there's a fade, a wipe, things like that, uh, you're supposed to take note of it and sort of, I guess, be aware uh, of the mechanics of storytelling. Um, so this is, uh, 
again, maybe would have been gone over in a, a first uh, intro media studies or acting class or writing class, but uh, did not do that. So um, the next part is you're supposed to watch, I think, a news program and uh, again, be conscious of what they are, are showing you uh, and how things are presented. And then the part that gets people angry is you're supposed to turn off the television and watch a turned off television for 30 minutes. And how does that make you feel? I mean, you could, I hope, I hope that won't send anybody to therapy, but uh, it is good to be aware of your feelings and not just as something that happens to you, but something that uh, you can sort of notice and uh, react to. Um, the, uh, well, I had a thought just a moment ago, but um, anyway. Um, step away from the mic to breathe. <clears throat> but um, so you know, once once we have sort of a, an understanding of the structure of you know the the shows that they're trying to you know, have things presented to us. Uh, the question is, can we do any sort of analysis on this uh, and sort of have a, uh, have sort of a, a, a framework or pattern um, for how these things are structured? You know, how can we maybe tell better stories or uh, discover little tricks that people used? Um, and the, the original thing was to do something like commercial detection because if you have a full long video file that's just a dump from a VHS from unknown time, uh, maybe you want to just see the commercials. So a um, long time ago, I saw a uh, project that had gotten featured at some film festival. Um, I think it was in Brooklyn. Uh, I didn't, I thought it was another more famous one, but uh, they took movies and they made barcodes out of them. Uh, and the first one I saw was kind of uninspiring, but other people actually went and did the processing. Um, I want to do one that's a little bit um, structured a little bit differently. I'd like to actually sort the pixels in some way. Uh, they just took a screen cap and squished it. Uh, but uh, once you have this, you can make things like histograms um, and uh, you know eventually use that as a as a a data source and have some sort of, if not a neural network, some other kind of low, lower computational power machine learning to categorize what it is you're watching. Uh, I don't care that much about sports, but I appreciate that they're interesting because you don't necessarily know what the outcome is. Uh, so good for sports fans, uh, although I will, I will buy a Vicarious winner shirt if anyone produces one. Um, <clears throat> anyway, so uh, as another side effect of having this data source, um, you can do things like background analysis, see if there's any sort of uh, motion going on. Uh, one of the uh, demo filters that uh, I got from the, um, the original Flask video streaming, uh, it just averages a bunch of frames, compares it with it compares it with the current one, does a little bit of processing on what has changed, and draws a bounding box around it. Uh, animation especially, you can tell nothing changes in the background. Uh, and once it's pointed out, you sort of, again, become aware of what they want you to focus on. Uh, I mean, a lot of times for cartoons, it's a character's mouth or you know something else that's moving. Uh, and you know, animation is a an artificial medium, but uh, you sort of you know break it down from from how it was created and how that affects the finished product. Uh, something I realized a long time ago. One of the side effects of animation production is that it's done in very small batches, and so the scenes are always changing, and so it's sort of at the very least entertaining to watch because uh, there's always something new. But that, again, is a side effect of how it is made. Um, so uh, 
Let's see what the next slide is. Um, right, so uh, mostly this is, this is using uh, OpenCV, uh, Open Computer Vision, uh, which was started a very long time ago, um, and a convenience package for IMUtils. Uh, this is run by, created and open sourced by uh, Adrian Rosebrock, um, and again, this is a bunch of convenience features, and one of the uh, good thing is you only need to change one line of code to go from a uh, capture from a file to get frames out of it to live video. Uh, um, yeah, but again, there's lots of example code out there. Uh, there's lots of directions that this could go. Uh, if you want, you know, motion detection, uh, that exists, but what if you want the opposite? You want the things that stay the same in case, again, maybe you want to get good still frames of some sitcom's apartment, uh, and then you can take that as data and put it somewhere else um, for reconstruction or photogrammetry, uh, or again, if you want to steal someone's zoom background. Um, uh, Yes, so things do not go always in order. Uh, I guess one, one, one other side effect of perhaps being exposed to too many special effects reports and uh, that itself is sort of a, a narrative. It's like, this is how they did this. Uh, and you, know, you, you get lost in the uh, method of creating it. I don't know if if storytellers of ancient time gave little uh, master classes on, on how they tell stories, but uh, you know, you, you have the, the special effects report and you're like, yeah, that's cool. And then when you watch it, you're like, wow, that's cool. I know how they did that. And you might be uh, completely oblivious to the emotional tone that they're trying to convey or, you know, Great, they used this lens, but you know, what does the sun rising over this mountain supposed to make you feel? Humans, aside from liking narrative, they have lots of feelings. Uh, and storytelling is another, you know, sort of artifact of, uh, of the way humans are. But so, uh, one of the fun things of finding old videotapes. Uh, these two TV stations do not exist. Um, also slightly uncomfortable by the Twin Towers here, but at least it's not WPIX 11. Um, but uh, it's funny here with uh, WNEW 5, which they're, they're touting their 40 years of fine tuning. Uh, this I think was from 1983. And I think maybe 1985 or 86, it became WNYW, which is now a Fox 5 station. Uh, WNYC, I believe, is, was part of the, uh, the same group that had the, uh, the radio station, and that you know, came together and came apart. Uh, and so this is a, a relic from the past, definitely. But um, the, the one on the left here, somebody had HBO in the early 80s and they put a tape in and they hit record for three or four hours, um, which was sort of amazing. I actually was able to find out what day it was recorded, uh, but just totally wild stuff. Uh, three movies, uh, the first of which I had to search for because they had missed the intro. Uh, but. Um, other things like Nightline, if you wait around, they will tell you what day it is. Uh, but the other interesting thing is that we still have car ads. They had car ads. Uh, the cars earlier, you know, they could advertise for $4,000, which is sort of amazing, but that's inflation for you. Also, possibly no airbags. Um, other fun stuff, and I wish I could find the tape that I got this from, but uh, this was, this was X-Files, it was a rerun. It was brought to you by the movie that was coming out soon, Strange Days, and uh, they even had a short promo to join their discussion on Delphi. So this was, this was before 1994 when uh, commercial usage of the internet was uh, explicitly allowed. Um, and also, 
Yes, I know this is hilarious that this is, these are literal screenshots. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, some, some people get sent screenshots of like, can you believe that this is what I found? Uh, but there was an ad for Next Step, um, which was, uh, you know, which is, which is prevalent in the GNU operating systems uh, now, but was, um, I'm just, I'm, I'm very curious why they had an ad for it. Uh, yeah, then again, on uh, Jason Scott's talk, he, he mentioned some tapes that he had found from someone where they were uh, talking about this hot new OS from AT&T that was going to change everything. Uh, I guess it depends on your, on your audience, but... Um, so, uh, one of the things that I wanted to do, uh, and of course there is still time, but uh, using the movie barcode type of uh, analysis, um, and the great thing is once you've recorded something, uh, you can just go back and take the, the, uh, the file, um, and OpenCV has a lot of, uh, I guess, decoders, but that's a solved problem. You can convert from one thing to another. But taking two episodes of the same procedural and uh, seeing how they line up, seeing how they have arranged the beats, um, you know, and, and sometimes the law and order sound effect. But, um, you know, everything is the same except for where it's different. Uh, and I was also watching a kung fu movie that uh, someone had on, on TV, and I was sort of wondering, how much of this movie do they actually spend fighting? Which you could do with a, a pose analysis, uh, pose estimation library, um, and then you can have that as output um, in some sensible way to, to make it make sense. But um, uh, I don't know if you've ever watched a movie on Amazon Prime, but they have their little X-ray and they will tell you about the actors that happen to be in that scene. Um, what, what I had wanted to have uh, prepared was a, uh, an analysis of a Star Trek episode. It happened to be um, uh, Best of Both Worlds Part Two, so Picard would not be in it as much, uh, but Riker would. So if you were a Riker liker, you could get some kind of percentage of appearance in uh, in various episodes, but um, yeah. So uh, as as a data source, live TV is sort of infinitely uh, infinitely mineable wasteland. Uh, but you know, in case you have time to destroy, uh, it's certainly always there. But um, so uh, a lot of the ideas that I had with this. Uh, were sort of helped and supported by um, uh, one of the groups that we have. Uh, we're sort of in transition between Meetup and Discord and Jitsi. And uh, best thing is to just go on our website, find out what we're hosting now um, and what the different uh, topics are. Uh, um, yeah, one of one of the previous talks was using uh, neural networks to figure out, uh, you know, generative uh, M.C. Escher drawings. Uh, so, um, some people are using it for family photos and seeing if they can identify people and if it's the same person. Ask questions: Who is this? How are they related to us? Things like that. Um, but. Uh, It's always good to have notes, right? Um, one of the other things that I had uh, wanted to do with a VCR, but the DVR does not have an analog tuner in it, uh, was some way to automate recording the video off of the VHS cassette, rewinding it, and then having the captions hard matted and automatically detecting uh, what um, the captions are. Uh, so you don't have to go through, do it manually, or lose it forever. Uh, it's also another fun one. If you watch a show from a certain time, sometimes the captions are sponsored, and they'll put the sponsoring company's uh, you know, tagline at the time, uh, which is completely foreign to us now. But um, 
Anyway. Uh, yep, yeah, and I guess if, if anybody has a cool project, uh, send, send me an email. Um, I'm reworking the website because, of course, everything is always in progress. Uh, and I'm going to put some of my other um, hardware and software projects up there. So, uh, any questions? Uh, I guess a, 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 good, a good question is why, but, uh, you know. We do have a question over the matrix chat. Or okay, actually a excellent. Clar a clarification, actually. Yes. Uh, someone was curious if you could clarify which H HDMI to USB capture device you were using. What are some examples? The, uh, like the model or the version or the equipment? Uh, unfortunately, I mean, there are a lot of them, which is great. Um, is it the one that just said CSP 2.0? That was my question. I, I'm pretty sure. I, I mean, it, it, you know, can't, can't zoom in on it, but it basically just says HDMI video capture. It is not a USB-C uh, to HDMI out. Uh, it is, and it'll, it'll take up to 4K. Um, it will only output 1080p, uh, but... Um, this one, also useful because when there's no signal, you get color bars. Uh, previous one was just blank, which is not great when you discover that it has actually died and you are not getting any video at all, uh, ever. But um, yeah, again, I, I, I support the, uh, <laughs> the tiniest KVM use case for this as well. Um, but uh, an unfortunate amount of time Yesterday was spent getting the infrared output working, but I successfully got it to turn off, so I'm kind of happy. Uh, but again, all the documentation for that sort of thing is online. I um, was not able to construct one and uh, have a one, two, three times an LED joke. But um, yeah, so it's, uh, I think it's an interesting project. There's always something new uh, being broadcast uh, and, and untold things to discover uh, in people's discarded VHS tapes or donated or purchased at a yard sale. But anyway, uh, thank you for coming. Is there a repository somewhere where all this... There, there will be. Um, there is not as much code as, uh, as I thought. Uh, the starting point was a Flask uh, live video streaming, um, and again, there are other uh, no processing streaming solutions out there. Uh, so the, the, the real point of this, and it, it takes every frame, it does the processing, and then it re-encodes it as a multi-part JPEG and just sends it along, which is also why it will consume any CPU power that you have available. Uh, although having multiple people view it uh, doesn't make it get worse, so that's that's an upside at least. All right, any other questions? Excellent, well thank you Adam for the presentation and thank you audience for, for being here to, to participate in the presentation. In about 15 minutes we'll have our next talk, Hackers Can Help, Open Technical Problems, Investigative Journalism. And the matrix chat for this talk will be open through the end of the conference and beyond. So if you wanna communicate with Adam at all about his um, his work, go ahead and log into the Matrix chat. Thank you very much.